Hello, and welcome back to IdeaSex, where we take an analytical lens to mystical and spiritual phenomena. Today is going to be the first video in a series I'm calling Declassified. It's going to be a playlist here on the channel, and basically, we're going to be taking a look at documents declassified by the, the CIA, all about psychic phenomena. And the reason I want to do this is because there's actually a lot of mind-blowing science out there that I think it's not common knowledge. And if it was, uh, I think the, the world would look like a slightly different place. Today, we're going to be looking at a document about Syntergic theory. It was declassified in 2001. And basically what it postulates is that we all share a single consciousness. And because of that, we can actually influence our external reality through thought alone. <laughs> Trippy. Move over. Law of attraction. You were the tip of a big ass iceberg. We're rising, we're falling, we're the too long don't want to watch version is this. In 2001, the CIA declassified this document on syntergic theory. And what it says basically is that one, we all share a single field of consciousness that connects everything in existence. And two, we can allegedly influence this consciousness through thought alone, through phenomena like telekinesis and telepathy. Syntergic theory is the brainchild of Dr. Jacobo Grinberg Zilberbaum. His name is a mouthful, so we're just going to call him Jeezy. Like g e z but minus a syllable. And instead of dropping hot mixtapes, he's dropping bombs on everything we think is real. This dude has a story and a half. Not only did he mysteriously disappear after taking his work on syntergic theory public, uh, but it's based on him having witnessed the miracle healings of a shamanic woman named Pachita. Uh, she allegedly performed psychic surgery on people with nothing other than a blunt mountain knife. <laughs> Ow. On a scale of like normal to miracle, that is some Jesus level shit. GZ, Jacobo, sees this and is obviously mind blown, right? Like pff, brain on the floor. And being a man of science, uh, he was a neurophysiologist by trade, he decides to apply the scientific method. And in the years that he shadowed Pachita, he formulated this thing called syntergic theory, which basically states that our brains create neuronal fields that interact with a pre-space structure. In other words, consciousness is non-local. It extends outside of our brains. It can interact with other fields and always is interacting with that field that underpins all of existence, uh, the energetic unified field that we were previously calling the divine matrix. And so Jacobo was like, what Pachita does is abnormal, uh, but what if she's just tapping into a potentiality? What if she has capped out abilities that we all have innately? Is there a way to test it? Plot twist, we're all superheroes. And so Jacobo devised a series of psi experiments to see if psychic phenomena are real and trainable. And he shares four of those experiments in this document. So without further ado, let's hop on my computer here, GLaDOS, and take a look at what this document has to say. From the top, make it drop this on Syntergic Theory. Uh, this is written in an annoyingly academic way, so I'm going to read the highlights and then translate it into human, if that's okay with you. The syntergic theory postulates that the brain creates an energetic field, the neuronal field, that expands into space, interacts with the space-matter continuum, is able to change the informational content of the latter, and thus affects other neuronal fields and physical forces. Translation. We can move shit with our minds, bruh. In the syntergic theory, experience is considered as the interaction between the neuronal field and the energetic organization of space. A high neurocentric brain will experience unity, while a low neurocentric brain will experience reality from the vantage point of the personal ego. You know what he's talking about, right? If you've been here before, this is unity consciousness. And this line is really exciting to me because he is validating an idea that I've been wondering about for a cold minute now, which is 
is this state, this, this altered state of consciousness, the space that people have traditionally performed healing miracles from? Woo-woo, I know it's woo-woo, but at the least, we know that a high neurocentric brain, a brain that is highly coherent, um, lends itself to a feeling of unity, and a low neurocentric brain lends itself to experiencing division. And we know anytime we're perceiving things as separate from us, we're operating from the ego, from left brain consciousness. A high neurocentric brain would increase the synergy of a space and thus could affect the experience resulting from the interaction of other neuronal fields that altered space. In other words, uh, the more coherent a state the brain is in, the better it can interact with other fields. So hypothetically, a high neurocentric brain would lend itself to psychic phenomena like telepathy. And we can think of telepathy as just being two of these neuronal fields interacting. So I've got this ring of consciousness that extends from my skull. You've got one that comes from your skull. And when they interact, <laughs> we're in telepathic communication. This approach is one that contemporary physics requires to be able to incorporate experience into its realm and thus expand its limits to include life and consciousness. Jacobo is battling the same thing that Rupert Sheldrake is. Uh, the same thing that Gopi Krishna was back in the 70s, and that is that mainstream science is so resistant to even entertaining these ideas. Um, even though there's things from like, like literally leading scientists in Russia and CIA documents being declassified on it. <laughs> and it's frustrating because mainstream science um, is not nearly as interested in consciousness as it probably should be, given the fact that we cannot talk about quantum physics without talking about consciousness. We know without, without a doubt that mind, that our consciousness affects the behavior of quantum particles. Um, and I think physicists hate that. Of course, none of this could be possible with our traditional ideas around consciousness. And so my man Jeezy kicks us off with this anecdote from a Zen master, Suzuki. And Really, all it is is another metaphor for what we've been talking about. A unified field of consciousness, a collective consciousness, a uh, divine matrix, and Suzuki. Same thing, but he calls it the big mind. And Jacobo goes on to tell us that for this big mind, this collective consciousness to exist, five things need to be true. One, brain activity exists outside the skull. In other words, consciousness is non-local. Two, this extra school activity establishes a functional connection between different brains and unites them. Um, so not only does the field extend outside of our skull, but it also can interact with, with, with other fields. Three, and this one is trippy, space is a component in our brain's perceptual construction of reality. In other words, space can't really exist. We have to prove that space isn't real. It's just how our brain perceives reality. It's how we make sense of our experience, like time. Four, a fundamental energetic matrix exists behind every material object and physical manifestation. So an energetic matrix exists in everything. And then five, the feeling of individuality can be transcended to gain access to the perception of unity. We've talked about this before, unity consciousness, this idea that we can transcend our ego and actually experience the collective consciousness, this, this um, higher mind. I frequently refer to it as one consciousness manifesting as infinite possibilities, an idea that we explore a lot here on Idea Sex. We're just going to assume the five things he tells us here are true because he spends the next few pages laying out different studies and scientists that basically provide evidence for these five points. And all of that lays the groundwork for the experiments that he conducts. So at this point in the document, Jacobo takes us from these big macro level ideas down to the micro. We decided to study the phenomenon of human connection because in it, a small model of the interaction between fields could be observed and some of its manifestations recorded. And then he gives us three studies around telepathy and one around telekinesis. Um, you may want to stick around until the end because these get progressively more incredible, uh, the TK one being kind of insane. In experiment numero uno, a psychoanalyst would work with a patient to try to establish empathetic communication. And these sessions were video recorded and the patient and the analyst both had EEGs hooked up to their 
head, so monitoring the electrical activity in the brains. After the sessions, the analysts would chunk uh, the conversation from one to 10 in terms of how empathetic the communication was. So they had a ranking system where they would look at segments of conversation and decide on a scale of one to 10, how empathetic is the communication. And then they compared the analysts ranking rankings to the EEG recordings. And what they found is that in moments where the analyst had ranked the conversation as being high in empathy, um, the EEG recordings from the patient and the analyst started to mirror one another. We found that in the sessions in which the analyst reported more empathic feelings toward the patient, the frontal EEG derivations of both brains showed a maintained increase of similitude. In other words, when a conversation was ranked as being highly empathetic, uh, the EEG recordings showed that the analyst and patient's electrical activity in their brains started to mirror one another. And I think, huh, I think this study would be really interesting if to do again, if they did it with uh, people who identified as empaths, at least the analyst, but if, if both of them were, um, because it seems, I mean, the point here is that increased feelings of empathy lead to coherence mirroring between two people's brains. We have to be in that state of compassion, which is very telling. Experiment number two. Over the course of several months, three people were trained to activate pressure a feeling of pressure in between their eyebrows, so their third eye. What a useless skill. I volunteer as tribute. Shut up, I'm not done. Then these, these three eyebrow people were placed in a Faraday cage, which is this box that blocks out electromagnetic fields. And so they sit in this dark box, close their eyes, and try to instigate that feeling of pressure between their eyebrows and when, when they feel the activation, they press a button. In 28 out of 30 of these studies, so all but the first two, it was found that the button pressing was very close together, that they correlated. When one of the subjects felt the pressure activation, at least one of the remaining subjects, and in some cases, the two of them also felt activation within themselves. And then when asked to report on the experiment anecdotally, the members of the group claimed they could feel this interaction. To prepare for experiment three, they trained four men and four women in specific meditation techniques. And then in the actual experiment, they again put them in a Faraday cage. Uh, they are hooked up to EEGs and they try to establish communication with their fellows. That's, that's their wording, not mine. I don't call people fellows. I do sometimes call my hats bonnets. Pip pip cheerio. I digress. These people are essentially trying to send images and ideas back to one another with their brains. They do this in two minute intervals and then they write down their subjective experience of those two minutes. And then two independent judges blindly analyze the reports from the meditators and rank them on a scale of zero to three. So they look at these two minute intervals and if it seems like the people in this group had nothing in common in the, in the reports they were writing, then they would rank it as a zero. And then a three was it seemed as though they had direct communication like you and I were having like a verbal conversation. Um, and in trials that were marked with a three, it really did sound like these people had been talking to each other. They weren't, obviously. They were trapped in a cage. Um, subject A. First, I saw an image of a sport trophy, a man with his hands up. Later, I thought about images. Finally, I entered meditation. Subject B. I let myself go. Then I saw a sport trophy made of gold, a lot of images. Then I saw subject A as he is seated. Finally, I saw the gold trophy again. So we have two things going on here. There are the subjective reports from the meditators that separate judges ranked and EEG recordings of the, the brain activity in the meditators. What they found is that in these trials marked three, the EEGs, the, the readings of their brain activity, uh, mirrored each other. And that's all we get for telepathy. In the next study, Jacobo reveals what he found uh, regarding telekinesis. I demonstrated that a chance in brain coherence was correlated with alterations in gravity. Uh, he does this again by trapping a human in a box. And then inside the human cage, he puts a wood box, inside a Faraday box, inside a metal box. And do you know what he puts in that box? It's not in a box. 
No, that's wrong. Wrong is in not the right answer, but also wrong is in what's wrong with you? Why have you done that? What if you get stuck? In the box, Jacobo, not Justin, Jacobo puts a piece of metal weighing 0.1 grams suspended from a grass transducer, which was fixed to a metal bar placed on anti-vibrational sand. Makes sense, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know what the f that means either. So fortunately for us, they drew a picture. You can see this dude with the tentacles coming out of his head. That's an EEG in a room with the Russian doll box. And in that box, there is a weight. Okay, side note, but like, why do we say tentacles, tentacles? Like when you think about the way it's spelled, it ends in L-E-S. And we say Hercules, Hercules. Like, why don't we say tentacles? Who made these rules? Anyway, when the dude in the box, our hero, tentacles, <laughs> experienced a high state of coherence, a change in the weight of the weight happened. In other words, this little dangly thing no longer weighed 0.1 grams. Uh, in other, other words, Telekinesis. What does it mean? The results agree with the idea that all of us are one. It means one consciousness manifesting as infinite possibilities. What do you think? Tell me in the comments, do you think Dr. Jacobo Grinberg Zilberbaum's syntergic theory is legit? Are you convinced? Eh. Well, this was written in like the 90s, my dudes. It was declassified in 2001 and we have come a long way in 20 years, especially Russia. Like I, some of this shit, I'm, I'm still not sure I believe it, but the evidence is here. So if that interests you and you wanna tumble a little further down this mad, mad rabbit hole, do join the guild and subscribe. We may take a wee break from the science. I'm feeling something less technical for a while, but in any case, thank you so much for bringing your consciousness here to Idea Sex today. And until next time, stay blessed.